the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the vital events of the hour, brought to you three times weekly. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Dr. Jan Papanek, formerly ambassador from Czechoslovakia and member of the advisory committee of the United Nations. And Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable O.K. Armstrong, United States Congressman from Missouri. In this spontaneous and unrehearsed discussion, the opinions are necessarily those of the speakers. Congressman, uh, many of our listeners will remember you for your splendid stories and articles in Reader's Digest. I believe you are, you're from the Missouri Ozarks, aren't you? That's right, Mr. Huey. I live in Springfield, Missouri, and that's right in the middle of the Ozarks. And, uh... Uh, you're a Republican from that state, too, aren't yes, you? Yes, believe it or not, <laughs> I'm a Republican. Well, we'll be... But a progressive Republican. I see. Tonight, sir, we are, and our, in our listeners will be most interested in what you're doing in Congress, your efforts to free the splendid American <coughs> journalist Bill Otis. Now, uh, how did you come to champion uh, the Mr. Otis? Well, Mr. Huey, um, being a journalist uh, myself, a former newspaper man and magazine writer, I uh, was uh, attracted to the idea that something should be done when the communist regime of Czechoslovakia imprisoned this man uh, simply because, as we felt, that he was going about his duty. So I introduced an amendment to a resolution in Congress which called upon our government to uh, cut off trade relations with the communist regime of Czechoslovakia unless he is freed. You are, of course, convinced of that Otis is innocent of all the charges that have been made against him. Oh, yes, indeed. And I'm sure um, the, uh, my colleagues in Congress agree on that. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what steps <coughs> have, have now been taken to free Mr. Otis? Uh, well, Mr. Huey, um, the resolution which was passed by Congress uh, calls upon our government to break trade relations with Czechoslovakia unless Mr. Otis is freed. Now, that resolution was passed, uh, I believe, Dr. Papanek, you recall the date, the passage uh, of that resolution. It was in uh, uh, August 24th, yeah. uh, if I'm <coughs> not mistaken. Well, at any rate, Doctor, since that time, uh, considerable pressure has been uh, put on the Czechoslovakian government, as you know, uh, to free this uh, American newspaper correspondent, but unsuccessfully. Now we think it is time to put in, uh, put all the pressure that we can to get him freed. What particular yes. steps have been taken uh, prior to your action, sir? Prior to the action of Congress on my resolution, uh, the President, the Secretary of State, and others in the executive departments had made some moves uh, to free Mr. Otis. Uh, those moves were, for the most part, diplomatic. We felt, or at least a great many of us in Congress felt, that they were just slaps on the wrist. They were not strong enough. And therefore, we went ahead with this resolution. Now, at the present time, uh, I have uh, uh, introduced a new resolution uh, which would make the breaking off of trade relations with Czechoslovakia mandatory. In other words, uh, they would be broken off by congressional action. Now, uh, there have been some other moves made, for example, prohibiting the airplane traffic 
uh, from Prague, the capital of Czechoslovakia, and other points in that country from flying across the occupied zones of Germany. This, I think, is hurting them. At least, uh, I think it is. What do you think, Doctor? Uh, definitely, it is uh, hurting them because the direct connections with the West that are very important by air are uh, cut off. And, uh, it's costing them money? It's costing them money, uh, very definitely, and uh, they cannot contact the West the same way as they could, because most of the other lines, uh, Americans and others, uh, stopped their flights to Czechoslovakia too. Now why, why uh, Doctor, was Otis seized in the first place? Was he seized as a hostage? Of, in my opinion, just uh, the purpose was to have him as a hostage for uh, future purposes. And that, those, some of those purposes, what did they want from us? Uh, what did they want to they, trade uh, Otis one for? Of the, one of the reasons is that they were complaining and are still complaining of the uh, broadcasts of the Voice of America and the new broadcasts that are developing from uh, Munich uh, directed to Czechoslovakia. And they see yeah. Otis to intimidate uh, us. Intimidate <laughs> and perhaps to free him if these broadcasts would be stopped. But uh, uh, Congressman Armstrong, could I ask you whether your uh, uh, resolution, especially the second one as it is uh, proposed, uh, is uh, or will be a part of the a general policy of uh, the United States or whether it is intended just for the purpose of helping to free uh, Mr. Otis. Well, Dr. Papanek, uh, while the resolution uh, is directed at the specific case of freeing this American citizen and correspondent, uh, it is the sentiment of my colleagues in Congress, I am sure, uh, that this be a test case and that it set a precedent and that wherever in any of the Iron Curtain countries under the domination of the Soviet Union, free citizens are imprisoned unjustly, that in the future the red regime of that government will be given notice uh, that we are going to take every step possible to protect them. I hope that the resolution, <coughs> when adopted, will cover every case and that there would not be any exceptions. Well, that's exactly what we hope it will do. Uh, the resolution, as you understand, uh, calls for the cutting off of exports from this country, from the United States, to your fatherland, to Czechoslovakia, uh, by action of the Commerce Department. In other words, the cutting off of all permits to export goods from this country. Likewise, uh, the Treasury Department, which has charge of imports from Czechoslovakia to this country, would prohibit any transactions that would permit trade uh, from Czechoslovakia to the United States. So it would be a complete blockade of trade either way. This policy, when uh, developed, will, will affect tremendously the people of Czechoslovakia, whose morale will be uh, strengthened to resist the communist regime. Is you there a strong resistance in uh, Czechoslovakia now, Doctor? Uh, definitely there is. I uh, would say that over 90% of the people oppose the regime. But uh, the uh, real uh, fact that uh, jails are full, that there are executions uh, practically every week, that uh, the forced labor camps are full, of uh, uh, about 300,000 people are there, uh, prove that there is a resistance. Uh, well, I, uh, I'm glad to hear your explanation of that, Doctor, because we in Congress, and certainly the American people, do not want to penalize the people of Czechoslovakia. We feel that they are the victims of communist aggression. Uh, however, we feel that uh, if this step is taken and those people of the resistance of the underground, the anti-communist forces in Czechoslovakia, they will be willing to make whatever sacrifice is needed in order to strike directly at the communist regime. Is no. that they, correct? They will be happy to do so, and uh, they know also that uh, 
the economic relations, trade relations, during the last months or last two years that have developed really supported the Soviet military build-up. No, because yes, Czechoslovakia yes. imported only raw materials and... No, uh, Congressman, after all, Bill Otis is an individual. And what I'm interested in is whether this is going to be effective in getting the man out. Now, do you, when do you think Otis will be released? Well, Mr. Huey, that is the $64 question so far as Mr. Otis himself is concerned. And as you say, he is a human and... Um, uh, we want to uh, free him. We do. We do not uh, want, of course. Would uh, you care to uh, predict this, just how long he'll be imprisoned? When do you think he'll be released? Oh, Mr. Huey, I believe when this blockade becomes effective, I believe that he will be freed within a few weeks. Uh, within three or four weeks from now, then you think there's a good chance that Bill Otis will be free? I think there is a good chance that he'll be free. However, I think that he will be freed when Moscow. Tells the Red Regime of Czechoslovakia well, to free him. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Congressman. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Dr. Jan Papanek and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable O.K. Armstrong, Congressman from Missouri. One of the most interesting monuments in New York is in Herald Square. It's a replica of the clock of medieval days, which was simply a striking mechanism. There was no dial, no hands, just tolling bells to mark the time. And way back in the distant past, the word watch was first applied to a timepiece where the time could be read rather than heard. And way back in 1866, that's 85 years ago, the first Longines watch was made, created to the ideals that forever and forever the name Longines would be placed only on the finest watches which mechanical skills could produce. How well successive generations of Longines watchmakers have followed this ideal is reflected by the public honors Longines watches have won. 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories. The Longines watches now being shown by fine jewelers throughout the land reflect in every detail of performance and beauty the perfection which today's Longines watches have attained. It's a fair statement that Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight. Reminding you that our program is brought to you three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So won't you join us again Wednesday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the vital events of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.